Doc Dan's. We had a huge week of hockey. Welcome back to the Wolves Hockey Show, the number one rated hockey theme show on Lakes Region Public Access. Back with me this week, Coach Latrell. Coach, good to have you back. Thanks for having me. I think the people have spoken again. It's either that or there's nobody left to do the show. So. No, several online Twitter polls <laughs> reveal that you are the number one requested co host on the number one show in the Lakes Region. Absolutely. Get the they want. Absolutely. A uh, huge week this week. Huge week with everything with the JVT event to the uh, lot of lot of youth hockey and junior games. Coach, tell me about your A teams. How did they do last weekend? Uh, so we had uh, one game last weekend or two games. Sorry, uh, played a very very good game against Princeton Academy. Lost in the last last five minutes. They scored a goal, beat us three two, um, and then we lost against the Cyclones six one. You know that. That 18s team is playing a lot of a lot of kids are also playing high school hockey, so they're getting a full two seasons out of this team. Yes. So they're getting their high school experience, and then they're also playing for our 18s team. Uh, what have you seen when players go to their high school and they come back? What are you seeing out of those athletes who are who are doing both? Who are doing both? Uh, just a lot of honestly, it's just a lot of bad habits. We got to break break from them. Um, but they, they work hard in our practices, and I, I, I see them improving in both in both areas, um, in both leagues. Um, I know they we've improved a lot as a team over the For course sure. of the year. Um, you know, Bridgeton Academy beat us six nothing earlier in the year at the start of the year, and now we're right up against them until the end of the game. They're a very good team. Yeah, and that that, that tells the whole tale of the team that when you're uh, you know when you're struggling to score a goal and you're not, you're, they get a lot put in the back of your net early in the season. Fast forward three months, and it's a different outcome where you're competing for that last five minutes. Absolutely. You know, so that's, that's hats off to the coach there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Players take the losses. Coaches take the wins. Yeah, absolutely. I heard that from. downhill, right? I heard that from a coach once. Fifteens <laughs> uh, were in action. They had one win against Cyclones Academy, their U15 team. That's a nice win for them, three to two down in Cyclones Arena. And then our sixteens played the East Coast Spartans. Um, they were paced by the um, Day, Neil, and Winter line. Uh, which really uh, you know, jump-started the offense for us in a 5-1 to one win. So great job by that unit. we got a couple clips we're going to show you of our 15s and 18s in action. All right, here we are in first half action. U15 Wolves versus the Cyclones Academy. Breaking the puck out here, going from defense to offense. Jake Tash gets it in the zone, gets it to the net. Doesn't convert in that early attempt, but then kicks out. Nice play by the defenseman there to keep it in the zone. It's going to kick out here to Caleb Couture, who fires it, rifles it home. Wolves take a 1-0 lead and win the game 3-2. And here's action for our U18s against Bridgeton Academy. It's an excellent game played on Sunday morning here in Laconia. Offensive zone faceoff. In the second half of the game, taken by Zach Rich here, gets to the net. Bridgeton tries to break it out. Intercepted on the forecheck. Nice play there, getting it to the net. Sam Foles, great shot, great finish. Wolves lose, but played a great game. Now, Coach, what have you seen out of Sam Foles? He's a nice player for the U18 team. He had a nice goal there against Bridgeton. What have you seen out of him this year? He has improved immensely over the course of the year. Um, he's got a really good shot, some great hands. Um, takes him a couple steps to get going, get up to top speed. But, you know, once he's there, he's, he can play, play with the best team. I think so, too. I think he's a player that um, shows up every day, goes to work. Uh, he's a really humble kid, quiet kid. But oftentimes those kids who are a little on the quiet end are also the most coachable kids. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I think he's taking a lot of a lot of positive from the, your tutelage and he's applied it to his game. So keep with the hard work, Sam. Now, Coach, tell me about the EHLP team. They won, uh, they took three out of the possible four points of this weekend against two really strong Massachusetts teams. Tell me how that went. Yep. Uh, so they had a, a big one nothing shootout win against uh, the Seahawks Hockey Club. Um, went four rounds in the shootout um, with Jake Williams getting the shutout. Yep. And then... Uh, a hard fought the Boston Junior Rangers coming back, winning in the third period for them. Went up early and weren't able to hold off the Junior Rangers rush in the third period. Yeah, I mean it was uh, you know three out of four points against two really strong teams with uh, 
you know, who are just kind of jockeying for playoff position. It shows the you know the, the line of improvement where that where that NHL team is. One of the players that you know, as you mentioned, had maybe the most strides over these last two months is really emerging as a really solid option in net. Tell me about Jake Williams. Jake Williams, he's uh, he's worked hard. Um, hasn't played much uh, since the beginning of the season, but he's got a couple games in here and he's played outstanding. Um, it just needs to show how the work he's put in over the course of the year and how much he really wants to improve and succeed here. Yeah, that's great. So keep up the hard work, Jake. Uh, we got a couple clips we're going to show you from that Seahawks hockey club one up and win. So here it is. Here's the shootout. Wolves were 0-0 in overtime down at the Charles Moore Arena in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Michael Rambusic here line, lined up as our shootout uh, scorer. Comes in, good speed, moving his feet from right to left. Finds a hole in the goalie, and the Wolves convert. Now, with that goal by Rambo, Williams has to come up with a big save. Here he is, squaring up against the Seahawks shooter in the fourth round. Seahawks shooter steps in, crosses the blue line again, moving left, right to left, tries to shoot wide blocker, and Williams answers the call. Wolves pour off the bench with a nice one nothing win. Great job, guys. Now, tell me about the EHL team, Coach. They played six games in eight days. They won uh, four in a row at one point. Uh, tell me about what you've seen out of the EHL team these last two weeks. They have worked immensely hard over the past few weeks, and they're coming together as a team really well right now. They're playing their systems great and working for each other. Yeah, I mean, they've... Uh, you know, from, from the early season struggles to the to where we are at now, it looks like two different teams, but one of the strongest things I'd say about Coach Cooney's group is that it's basically the same player. And that's you know, that that's a credit to Coach Cooney and the job he's done keeping that group united, um, and working for each other. And now they're seeing the fruits of their work. Absolutely. Now tell me about uh, when they, their game on on Friday against Seahawks Hockey Club, what'd you see out of that game? Uh, that was a Tight game. That was again another shootout game there, and uh, that was a three-two win for us. So big, big win there. Needed the points. So absolutely. We got a couple clips. We're going to show you that Seahawks hockey club three-two win. Now Wolves here are down two to one in the third period, about halfway through. They have a power play. Nice play by Julius to get it to House, fires through a screen, set by A.J. Lacus, and the Wolves tie the score, two to two. Great job, guys. Now, here it is, the shootout winner. This was in the second round of the shootout. Julius Crandall comes in, nice patience, sells the shot, and deeks to his backhand. Great move by Julius, great win by our EHL team, three to two. Now, the highlight of the weekend, although we lost, uh, was the JVT game. Uh, you can see on the, on the website, we raised over $32,000 for the Cure Starts Now charity, all in the name of John Bradley Thompson, our local Guilford boy who suffered from DIPG and an operable form of brain cancer. Uh, Coach, give me some of your thoughts and reflections on what you saw on JVT night. It was a great night. Uh, the arena here was packed with fans coming to see the, the Wolves and support the cause. Um, and it was just a great atmosphere from the get-go. Yeah, I would really, you know, I think, I think an East Coast Junior Hockey, which isn't known for having a huge fan turnout, even in the North American League teams that are up in Lewiston or down in New Jersey, uh, there's not many nights that are better than JBT night in terms of creating an atmosphere. Uh, and we had all our Laconia fans out, probably four or 500 fans packing this arena, cheering on the Wolves and then supporting a great cause. Absolutely. Now, who is most impressive for you in the shootout? Ooh. Ooh. I think our shootout winner was probably the most impressive. He's got a pretty good mullet going there, the jean shorts too. Ch Chad Barron raised, raised his game to a new level. He uh, really set the bar pretty high. Oh, he did, definitely did. <laughs> we got a couple highlights we're gonna show you from the shootout. Here is our shootout finals. Neil Raven, Associate Commissioner of the EHL, comes in. Great speed, great hands. He tries 
to sell a fake and goes to his forehand and buries it on Kenny Hujakovs. Great job, Neil. And points to the bench. Wow. And here he is, Laconia's own TJ Oshie. Chad Barron showing unbelievable skill. Wheels coming in, keeping that puck on his forehand. Finding the back of the net. And we have a repeat champion. Chad Barron, winner of the 2020 JBT shootout. And now your champion again in 2022. Unbelievable job. He raised over $5,000 for the Cure Starts now and is officially a JBT legend. Great job, Chad. All right, Wolves fans, here we have two of the outstanding members of our U16 squad, Emmett Sullivan and Ryan Starman. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you, Coach. Now, we'll start with you first, Emmett. Uh, tell me about your background in hockey, where you got started, who got you involved. All right, so I started out at Gorham, Maine. My brother got me on skates as soon as I could walk, and I just fell in love with it. It's been awesome. Played in Maine for my whole life, moved up to New Hampshire last year, and uh, it's been fun. Good job. Ryan, same question. So I'm from uh, Long Island, New York, uh, which is a hotbed for hockey. So my dad got me on skates pretty quick, um, and then I just fell in love with the game as soon as that. And then I have uh, first time away from home, but it's been a blast up here. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. Now, Maine and New York. So. You must be a Bruins fan? Yeah, oh yeah. Islanders fan. Or Rangers fan? Nah, neither. Whoever pays the bills. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. But I mean if you had to you had this playoff series between the Bruins and the Islanders, what team do you think? I'll go Islanders. You're going Islanders. Yeah, okay, and you're going Bruins. Yeah. Okay. Now, um it's been a been an interesting year with the sixteens. We've had a, a lot of wins. We're up to I think 27, 28 wins, but really the uh, focus of that particular program is, is development, getting better every day and getting all the ice time. What has been some of the highlights for you, Emmett, on your U16 season? Uh, um, I think playing in my first junior game was really fun, just a great experience, and uh, really showed me um, how much work I have to put in to be at that level. Cool. And Ryan, question, same question for you. Uh, I think all the ice time that we're getting is just off the charts. I mean, I'm used to like practice lots a week, and I mean, here we can get up to 12. So that's... Um, that's obviously a big boost, and I've seen it, you know, with some of my stuff that I'm working on, and it's made a big difference. So, okay, great. Now, you guys both are living with host families here in the Lakes region. You're living with the Marku family up in Campton, and Ryan, you're living with the Mall family in Belmont, right down the road. Tell me about what's the best part of living with those families. Ryan, you're up first. Uh, I think the overall just sense that you're part of the family once you walk in the door. I mean, the Moles did a great job with me and just welcoming me right into their house and, and also having a roommate was nice. Um, so it's been a blast ever since I've gotten there and they treat me so well. So, yeah. That's great. That's great. Good question. Say, pretty much the same thing. I mean, the Marcus took me in as one of their own. Really made me feel at home and it makes some good food. So it's, okay. been, it's been fun. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, let's stay on that line of thinking. What's the best meal that uh, the Marcus cooked? Oh, it's got to be lasagna. Got it. Wow, lasagna. Okay. All right. Ryan, what's the best thing that Carrie and Kevin cooked? Uh, we had steak a couple nights ago. That was really good. They make some some nice steak. Yeah. Okay, so it was a steak. What were they on the sides? Mashed potatoes? They got mashed potatoes, corn, and stuff like that. Yeah, it was really good. All right. All right. That sounds great. Now, you've also had the experience of kind of having a brother with you this year. Uh, you're living with, um, with Brendan Marcoux, and then you're living with Julius. Now, tell me. What are some of the things that nobody knows that the listeners don't know at home? What about what? What is Brendan like back at the house? He's uh pretty much the same, you know, good guy. Uh, he had a lot of fun. Big knee hockey tournament. So big knee. Does Brendan snore though? Does he keep a messy room? Um, I think he does snore a bit. I think he does. And he just snore. <laughs> oh boy. All right, Ryan. What about Julius? What are people? What are the fans at home? What do they don't know about our Norwegian captain on the EHL team? Uh guy cannot wake up to an alarm it is um it was <laughs> when um we heard that before with julius so. yeah he uh there are a couple of times when uh Declan house is also on the hl team it takes him sometimes and you know, i have to wake him up but i mean i hear that thing all the time you know every five minutes so it gets me up but sometimes he doesn't get him up so yeah <laughs> we, have to, we have to figure out a new thing when julius is in college next year if it's uh he needs a more violent alarm. Yeah, I think he does. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, you had a cool, cool experience today. We got to get on the, uh, the outdoor rink in, in Guilford. Tell me about that a little bit. 
Uh, Ryan, you go first. Yeah, uh, I mean, Long Island, there's not many outdoor rinks, especially where I live. We're near the beach, so it's, I mean, it really snows and then goes away. So it was nice to get out there. And, I mean, I've been on a couple before, but it was a great experience and playing with teammates, so that was a lot of fun. Absolutely, it's a ton of fun. And then just a blast, you know, if they were the boys. Um, I had one back at my house in Maine, but nothing like that. Just a great, great rink. All right. Final question. I'm going to put you on the spot. And then we'll go with you first, okay? What is your all-time favorite Wolves memory? It can be anything in history. It can be your brother. It can be your 16th season this year. It can be JBT night. Well, it's all up to you. Favorite Wolves, Wolves moment? I'm going to have to go with the JBT night. Just uh, being stuff in the fire like that is just it's a great and really fun to watch the EHL guys go at it. Yeah. There was a... One of the one of the more amazing goals that you probably your brother if he's watching this broadcast scored a shootout winner against the Cyclones and it was say mid October 2015-16 season backhand top shelf not a bad net down there so but yeah, that wasn't the one you picked your team next so he's gonna probably burn you for that one yeah. Brian what's your favorite world memory uh I think uh, a couple days ago not the JVT game when they played in the Avalanche and they came back and they won four three I mean that was a blast of a game that it's, was. I mean, I think a lot of people put them away after down two nothing, and then they come back and they win the game, and yeah, so I think everybody was fired up. I couldn't agree more. I think you know, like that team, and you guys have seen it all year. They struggled in the early start, and then uh, they've just gotten better and better and better. And it's basically the same guys. You know, it's maybe there's that at, we had uh, one or two players, but that's about it. And it shows you what that kind of hard work, staying to it, you know, that stick activity, what that can mean for your season. Um, I hope you guys you put that in your back back pocket one day because you're going to have seasons like that too. Yeah. So great job for coming on, guys. Anything you want to say to the fans at home, mom and dad? Uh, thanks for all the support. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you heard it here, guys. Make sure to tune, tune in next 16's game. Emmett and Ryan, great job. All right, so we had Emma with us and we had Ryan Starman. What have you seen out of those two guys this year? They have worked hard, really hard. Um, they're they're out to every time they get on the ice, they're out there. Whether it's goalie session, the skill session, just trying to improve and get better. The two things that impressed me, or the one thing that impressed me about those two guys the most, though, is uh, they love the game, but they they they, they try their best. So, they, like you said, they're they're out there all the time, and they're good teammates. Yes. Uh, sometimes being a you know, good teammate isn't always. Uh, you know, you can have your moods up and down. You can have. Uh, you know, you can be a little bit different guy. You people know, like the most loved guy in the room, but those guys are good friends, good teammates, and then they work really hard. So they combine all those things you need to have a good culture in your room, and they really set a good standard for that. So keep up the good work, Ryan and Anna. Now, uh, schedule upcoming this week. Uh, what does the junior uh, team have coming up? Yeah, uh, so EHL is playing the New Hampshire Avalanche on Wednesday uh, at Hooks It. Look at the ice then. Um, Friday, both EHL and EHLP teams are traveling to Walpole to play both of their teams. And Saturday, uh, EHL will be at home okay. playing in our, our barn. Okay, so a lot of hockey. Make sure to tune into the website, fans, and check out those games. Uh, with the youth stuff, we only have a, a limited schedule this week. Uh, we do have a tournament coming up uh, towards the end of February that you guys are all looking forward to. And these next couple weeks, we're just kind of getting ready for those, those end-of-the-season tournaments. Uh, six teams do have one game, or one game right now. They're playing the East Coast Spartans. So good luck, six teams with Ryan and Emmett in that game. Um, Coach, this thoughts and reflection of what you've seen out of the teams at this time of the year they, as they jockey position to get ready for the playoffs. Uh, it's been some great hockey as of late. They're they're playing with some passion out on the ice. I think all the teams are are stepping up their level of play here as the season starts to wind down. Absolutely. So keep up the hard work, guys. Uh, that's our that's our show for today. Thanks for coming on, Lou. Thanks for having me. Hockey fans, remember to tune in to the Wolves website for more information, www.ne-wolveshockey.com.